Mark Davidson, Principal Trombonist at the Utah Symphony and Trombone Faculty at the University of Utah. Hello, I'm Steve Bentley, Professor of Piano Collaboration and Music Education, as well as the member of the Boston Crusader Brass Staff, sponsored by Inspire Arts and Music. Ferdinand David's Concertino, which you just heard, is by far one of the most commonly requested solos in the trombone repertoire. In order to perform this piece well, certain qualities are needed. Good sound and intonation, musical imagination, rhythmical understanding and integrity, and a desire to technically control one's instrument. I suggest you listen to the entire work with a score or with a trombone part first before just diving in and practicing. Make sure to play accurate rhythms throughout the movement, specifically the 16th note to triplet transitions. Sustain all half notes tied to dotted eighths. And David's concertino, as well as works by composers such as Gustav Mahler, almost every note has an instruction, whether it be a slur, staccato marking, tie, dynamic, accent, phrase marking, crescendo or decrescendo, and in some cases, even a slide position. Be sure to observe and follow through by honoring all of these markings. They will help you interpret and carry out the composer's intentions more thoroughly. And, as always, sing. To completely understand the musical interpretation of this work, it's important to revisit some of the music history uh, listening list that you had from your third semester music history course. Composed in 1836, this composition was originally written for trombone and orchestra. Now, some musicologists feel that this was actually one of David's unfinished violin concertinos, and he just reworked it for trombone and orchestra. Now, David was not a trombonist, but a very fine violinist, and he was actually held in high regard as an expert in the classical style of violin playing. He was the concertmaster in the Gavant House Orchestra, where Mendelssohn was the conductor. David and Mendelssohn had a lifelong connection. David was born in Mendelssohn's home a year after Mendelssohn was born. He was the concertmaster in Mendelssohn's orchestra. He would help with technical uh, rehearsals with uh, Mendelssohn's um, violin concerto in E minor, and he was also a very good friend of Clara Schumann and actually premiered her first violin concerto. So having known that, it's important to obviously understand that his sound and Mendelssohn's sound is going to be very similar. So it's important to listen to um, Mendelssohn as well as David. Now, we find that Mendelssohn's style has lyricism, vitality, tight musical structures, which, which is very similar to the David uh, work. Also, it seems to me when I was listening to both of these composers, there's kind of an ease and an elegance to their playing, and I encourage you to find that in your performance of this work. The third section is lyrical and smooth throughout. Strive for complete control of your sound as you explore the tapers and diminuendos. Explore the full range of the soft dynamics, 
Observe which notes are articulated or slurred. Play the turn in the ninth bar of this melody with good rhythm. Sing. This section is one of the most beautiful moments of the first movement. And once you have done some real good score study and understand your part perfectly, get away from the music and listen to what's happening between you and the soloist, making sure that you have an opportunity to make some beautiful music, little moments of nuance where you're maybe crescendoing two beats or decrescendoing just on one beat to give it that, that wonderful musical feeling. Remember that music is what you hear, not what you see. We hope you enjoy this journey through the exposition of David's concertino, and we hope it provides a framework to build upon as you explore and study the rest of this important work.